Hello, 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 my beautiful friends on this lovely day. So for today's episode, I wanted to talk about something a little bit spicy that really should not be considered spicy. (laughs) And by that, I mean kind of controversial, kind of, you know, gonna stir up some drama on the good old internets. And that is the concept that it is okay to be happy. And actually, you can choose to be happy. And actually, we all, in my opinion, should be doing this. For whatever fucking reason, the world is full of miserable people who hate seeing other people become happy. For some reason, the world is full of miserable people who hate when other folks find success. This is something that I've experienced firsthand in a lot of different ways. And, you know, I find it so interesting. So I've been a person on the internet for more than a decade now. I've been teaching spiritual stuff in public for more than a decade now. And no, I'm not as famous and fancy as I would like to be. I'm still working on it, you know, this podcast a part of that. But you know what? I have overcome a shit ton of things. And those of y'all who have been following my work since a decade will know that. Will know that I've overcome like a really shitty childhood. I've overcome sexual abuse. I've overcome like so much crazy stuff to get to where I am now which is a place of genuine happiness, genuine joy. Like I genuinely love my life and I'm just happy. That's my baseline is happiness. And I worked so hard for so many years to get to this point where I did so much self-development. I did so much personal transformation. I did so much spiritual work so much work on myself in all these different ways, physically, mentally, spiritually, psychologically, emotionally, all of it, to get to where I am now, which is a place where trauma and PTSD and all of that stuff, like that past history of abuse and crappiness, it does not really factor into my day-to-day life whatsoever. I genuinely don't think about it. And that's not because I'm trying not to think about it. It's because I genuinely don't care anymore. I'm healed from a lot of that stuff. And, you know, as I've kind of reached this point, it has become really shocking to me how many people resent me for it, how many people hate me for it, how many people are like, oh, like you shouldn't talk about being happy, you shouldn't talk about how good things are for you because other people are miserable, other people are going through things, like read the fucking room, like, you know, you shouldn't shine as brightly as you do because it's going to make someone else feel bad. And I fully reject that logic and it shocked me when I've encountered it because I really did not expect this is where we would be as a society right now but it unfortunately is where we are unfortunately we are at a place as a society where generally people don't want to hear about the success of others it is often too triggering people don't want to hear the happiness of others it's too triggering and it's considered insensitive to be happy but it's like what the fuck that doesn't make any fucking sense in my opinion whatsoever My happiness has nothing to do with other people. And how other people feel about that has everything to do with them and nothing to do with me. And the same is true for you. If you decide to be happy, if you decide to make choices that create a joyful life, 
how other people feel about that is none of your business and it's none of your concern. Unfortunately, what might happen is you find that a lot of people are not happy with your happiness. Who see They see it as a threat to their identity. And so as you get happier, as you get more joyful, more genuinely connected to letting that inner child come out and play from a space of joy and love and self-actualization. It is true that that can be, at first, a very alienating and isolating experience. It's like you finally got to where you wanted to go, the space of happiness and joy. And everyone all of a sudden is like, okay, well, fuck you then. It can be very alienating. You know, it can be. But I believe we can still choose to move towards joy. And the more we vibrate at that level of joy and happiness from a genuine, open-hearted, grounded, but also expansive space, once we are being at that vibration, it becomes a lot easier to attract other people who are also living their lives in that frequency. And so I believe we should all move towards that space of happiness. And like, obviously people can do what they want. If you are resistant to this, then like you do you boo, it's cool, whatever. Um, Do it, I don't care. <laughs> but I do think that life is more enjoyable when we move towards happiness and authenticity. And For whatever the fuck reason, I think happiness is not seen as sexy in our society right now. It's not valued as much as I believe it should be. Right now, it is sexy to be cynical and negative and just dismissive and bitter. We see it in meme culture. We see it on social media. We see it everywhere. You know, like people are rewarded in terms of content going viral or making more friends more easily or, you know, whatever the fuck it is, being more quote unquote relatable. It's more relatable to be miserable, which I think is fucking stupid, to be blunt. And so in a world that rewards misery, it is a radical act to dare to be happy in public. So do it. One of the things that magic is supposed to be about is creating change in your life. And I talked a bit about this in my first episode of this podcast, Why Are So Many Witches So Miserable? Because I've definitely noticed that, and I'm sure you guys have too, because right now it is the most listened to episode of this podcast. And so if magic is supposed to be about taking ownership of our lives, changing our lives, transforming our lives, transforming ourselves, our brains, our bodies, our emotions, our state of being, etc., Why the fuck are more witches not happy? (laughs) It's interesting, right? Oh, that was my little kitten, Choya. She agrees. And so in a space where being miserable is the sexy thing, being like a space where being miserable gets you more friends and followers... Dare to challenge that. Because, you know what? I used to be miserable too, so I get it. But it is like a bazillion times better on the other side of that mountain. And I know some of you listening might be like, oh my God, Sabrina, shut the fuck up. Like, you're so unrelatable right now. Like, clearly you've never been through anything bad that you can suggest that we can just snap our fingers and choose to be happy. And to whoever is thinking that, my response is, actually, it's quite the opposite. I'm saying what I'm saying about this, and I feel what I feel about this, 
because I've been through hell. Because statistically, based on my life experience, all of the horrible things I've been through, I should be like dead in a ditch at like 20. I should have been addicted to some crazy drugs and like, you know, homeless or whatever. Based on all of the horrible things I've been through. And so I know what it's like to really have a bad time. I know what it's like to be depressed. I know what it's like to be suicidal. I know what it's like to be rejected by your parents. I know what it's like to be raped. I know what it's like to be sexually assaulted. I know what it's like to have your whole friends and family abandon you in a time of need. I have been through the worst shit. And yet, I got through it. I survived. And all of the worst things that I've been through do not define me. And I have healed from it. But a big part of that was I chose to do that. I chose to do that work. I chose to heal. I chose to move towards this elusive thing called happiness. And I am so stoked to say that guess what? It's possible. Because I've gotten here. And if I can do it, so can you, even if it feels really far away right now. Even if it's like, oh my God, I just complain with my friends all the time. I don't know anything else. I wouldn't know what life would even be like if I didn't have anything to complain about. So it does take time to rewire our brains. I'll give you that. It takes some time and money and therapy and a lot of books and a lot of trial and error and a lot of perseverance. It does. I'll give you that. But because I have been through the absolute darkest depths of, like, life, (laughs) that is why I am such a loud and vocal advocate for joy and for really leaning into happiness, excitement, fun, playfulness, even if that feels hard right now. I believe it's 100% possible to get there and that whatever dead weight you discard along the way to choosing happiness and to making choices that get you closer to that, I believe it is 100% worth it. Will some people be grumpy that you're happy? Yes, absolutely. But those people are not worth your time, your energy, your love, or your care. They're just not, and that's a fact. And so if you are one of those people who feels fucked up and alienated by seeing other people's joy, I would invite you to take some time alone with yourself and really self-reflect on what the fuck that's about and what are you going to do about that. It's definitely a conversation to have with your therapist if you have one. But if you don't, have that conversation with yourself. Why are you so triggered by this? Does it uncover something that you wish you could have? Well, guess what? You can have it. You just have to make different choices. And I know sometimes people will reject this, be like, oh, Sabrina, it's not so easy, but it is. You have to decide that it's possible for you. If you're someone who is already happy and joyful, fucking high five, first of all. And if you are afraid to share that happiness with the world, whether that's on social media or in conversations with friends and family, like whatever that is, I'm going to challenge you to be happy in public. Don't dim your fire. Don't dim your flame. Don't dim that spark of vitality and joy and light because the world needs that. When we're happy in public, we are a bright, shining light and we show other people what's possible for them. We draw attention to the fact that the choices they're making could be different choices. And yeah, it's a journey. And yeah, not all days are going to be good or easy. But it's absolutely possible to normalize happiness. And if you hear some weird crackling, that is my cat playing with a toy. (laughs) Which I'm sure probably makes her very happy, even though it sounds weird on the podcast. (laughs) 
And so different strokes for different folks. What makes me happy might not make you happy. But I think it is important that we get into a very serious conversation about happiness. And I think it's important that we stop seeing happiness as cheesy or as like uncool or lame or whatever. Happiness is really cool, actually. You know what's not cool is being a cynical, miserable asshole. That is not cool. That is not sexy. That is not aspirational. And so if your role models are cynical, miserable people, I would really encourage you to reevaluate that and like what attracts you to that. You know, because it's like not the vibe in my opinion. So, okay, friends, that is the topic of the day. I'm going to leave you with that. This has been the Secrets of a Witch podcast with me, Sabrina Scott. You can say hello on the Instagrams at Sabrina M. Scott. You can check out my website at sabrinamscott.com. You can even book a tarot reading if you like, and we can even get into what is getting in the way of your happiness. A tarot can help us figure that out. You can check out my new clothing line at shopsabrinamscott.com. Maybe buy a hoodie or a cute hat or whatever. Everything looks cute, trust me. (laughs) So thank you so much for listening. If you love this podcast, please leave a five-star rating. And if you love this podcast, please leave a review. If you hate it, do not tell me or anybody. (laughs) All right, guys. Thanks so much. Catch you on the flip side. Bye.